Okay, here we are. Now what I decided to do, as I mentioned, or as I probably mentioned, I don't know, I'm doing both these videos at the same time, in the swing gate video, is I'm going to make a separate video on how I made the bridge. Because some folks might not give a hoot, so why hog up an already long video <laughs> on the swing gate with the bridge? Alright, so this will be the video that covers the bridge. It's going to go here, it's going to be a balance of deck bridge. And I'm basing it on the prototype uh, in Fairview, Pennsylvania. It's not going to be an exact duplicate, but I'm going to try to make it look acceptably close. So I have everything set here. I have another piece of one inch foam to bring it up to where I want it. This is going to be the road one millimeter um, foam. And I have my dimensions set here, especially about two and a half inches to here. And I got everything leveled. I had to do some remedial leveling here on this piece because it was off and I want it nice and level that's when I bring that bridge across uh, for the bridge itself I'm going to use a piece of half inch plywood nice quality stuff that I had around and I've got it cut to the size I want I don't know a lot about ballast of deck bridges I was not able to clamber up and actually measure the real thing so I'm going to get it as close as I can using photographs. So this is the bridge I'm trying to model. This is the Route 98 underpass for every Pennsylvania. These are the CSX tracks here. So you can see that this it's going to be this and then what I'm going to do and I'll show some more drawings and whatnot just for the, the thought process. I'm going to put a piece of styrene on the outside here down. I'm going to put actual I-beams running through it because they are there. They're hard to see, but I did walk under and actually walked under, took some pictures underneath this bridge. And actually, they're individual. There's four individual spans because it used to be a four track bridge, or it used to be four tracks up there. Only two now. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to run individual I-beams, evergreen I-beams across the bottom. I'm going to have this piece come down. You know, those will come in flush with it. There is a row of rivets, and it looks like an angle here. There's an angle here, and there's an angle, and an angle with rivets. So I have those um, angles. I'm going to use uh, 060 angles. I'm going to order some archer rivets and try to get them in there. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, and then I think there's one or two two maybe three other they're hard, it's hard to see this bridge is so old but there's other little strips i'm going to use 010 uh 010 by what 040 or something like that um a strip and then put rivets on it as, as the rivet plates that go across here so that's how i'm going to make this on here so i'll be a separate assembly pieces you know styrene coming down the i-beams all the angles the rivets um, i'm going to put if you look at some other pictures, you can see it overhangs a little bit up here. So I'm going to put, I think, a 1 8 by 188 uh, strip with a half round on the inside. Because I don't know what it looks like on the inside. Cause the, and Because right on this is going to be the cork and ballast. It's a ballast of deck bridge. So that's to give it some little edge so ballast doesn't go flying over again. I don't know if that's how it's like. In the real world, I did not want to go in there and clamber up and walk over here. Well, actually, I would like to, but... Knowing my luck, the one day I do it, the state police or the CSX police are out, so whatever. But there's definitely something there, so I'll do that. This handrail, it, it looks awful, awful beefy. I don't think, I was thinking maybe using a titchy handrail, but this looks like it's, the diameter of this is maybe three inches. I'm not sure that's possible, but it, it definitely looks larger. And again, I'd love to sneak up there and measure it. But So what I did, um, I ordered some 132nd brass rod and maybe <laughs> if i get my gumption up i'll actually make this out of scratch you know make i don't know how to do it make these you know make like a, a half with this curve over here another half bring it to here solder it together and then solder all these little uh, i don't know anyway that's what i'm thinking because it definitely looks bigger than a titchy railing and the other commercial ones i've seen just don't look right so I might go ahead and scratch build it. 
And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for these abutments, how I'm gonna do them. Because you can see this one. There's actually like three I'm calling it. There's there's this one here with a cap. And they go out and measure it, and I'll show you the, the dimensions. I'll get close to it. Then there's another one back in here that sits right here. And then there's this one that has basically one, two, three, like four steps in it. And then this runs all the way across, and the bridge comes up to that. So the bridge goes over these two, up against this one. So i got to figure out how I'm going to make all these. I think what I'm going to do, I thought about cutting them out of foam, but I don't know how to get that cap cut it out. I don't have a real good way to cut foam neatly you know, to make it a nice even cut. So what I might do is use wood, figure out the dimensions I need, what dimensions I need for a cap, glue the cap piece on. I'm not sure how many pieces I have to make this out of, but you know, make basically make this one up. This one's just a square one or a rectangular one. And this one sticks out and then do something a little bit higher to cut these. All right, so enough babbling so I gotta work on that so I have an idea for the bridge I'm gonna make it close enough the railing has to come somehow and then the abutments uh, the road itself I'm gonna put a sidewalk in I'll have the sidewalk I brought the road all the way over so everything's gonna be based off of this I'll put this you know the abutments will all go in both sides so when I get them built the sidewalk will go in and then you know paint stripe the road this road is going to come out to here to a T intersection. It's going to continue this way and then come over. I got to work on this, level this off a little bit, and then join in with this road that's existing. And then I will then trim this down. You can see I did trim this part of it down here in the back because, you know, actually, if you're wondering how I did that, I actually have the abutments made, but I'm pretending this is a how to video, so. <laughs> actually ahead of myself a little bit but I will show you what I did so that's what I had to do so actually I have figured that out but let me get to that in the next segment so this is going to be my rendition of this bridge here hopefully it comes close I think I'll be able to get it pretty close and the I pretty much got everything figured out except the railing right now and the fact I have the abutments all built the bridge sitting here I'm waiting for some material to come in to work on this stuff although I have the the styrene to cut, I have the angles and the channels. I just don't have the I beams. Uh, but I still can work on some of that stuff. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put in. This is a side view looking at the abutment. You can see it's kind of, you know, gnarly looking concrete. And then this is the cap. And then this is the other one in the back that goes up. So I'm just going to try to make it look like that. Now, this is, you know, my bridge is going to be 1957 ish. Might not be quite as dirty and old and crumbly as this one and this is being taken about two days ago in 2019 but using that for reference so all right let me uh go to the bench and kind of show you what i did to make these and how i measured things and designed things and figured things out to get it at least as close as i think i can get it so all right let's hop to the bench and see what kind of nefarious magic i worked up Okay, here in Santa's workshop, I'll try to show this as best I can. Again, this is not necessarily a how-to video, but more kind of the thought process. And if you're going to build a bridge like this, maybe some things you might want to think of before you start. Uh, you might use different techniques or be a lot better at it than I am, but this is what I'm doing. All right, so I did actually sneak out one morning, actually Saturday morning, to measure this a little bit. I did measure... This is my scrap sheet with my, with my chicken scratch, my measurements on it. Because I, I, I was going to estimate it, but I said, you know what, I'm just going to go out there and measure it. So I did measure the cap, the size of the, the you know height and width of the cap, the overhang, how far it sticks out from this here. Um, I did not. I was going to clamber up here and measure this, but I said, you know what, I'm not going to do that. There's people driving by, giving me weird looks. I just don't feel like dealing with it. So. But I, I was able to get dimensions of the cap. And from that, I then had another sketch. This is a horrible sketch, my first sketch, looking down on the bridge. So you have the bridge itself. Then I have, you know, the sidewalk and the road. Then I have the, the cap piece, I call it. That abutment with the cap on it. Then the rectangular piece that's behind it, which is 
this piece and then the other piece that's rectangular with steps that go up behind the end of the bridge that's this one and by the way, when I first drew this I drew it all backwards because <laughs> I'm a dork because when I had this one over here I was like this isn't right anyway so so that was my first sketch kind of gave me an idea of how I was going to do it so then what I did I said okay what material do I have or do I have well I had not, not much but what's available that I can get quickly because I really didn't feel like ordering and waiting a week to get material um, obviously northeastern scale lumber has got a lot of good stuff that I could have used um, but I wanted to get something either at Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, Michaels, blah blah blah. I don't have a good hobby shop near me you know, within an hour I didn't feel like driving two, two and a half hours just to get some materials. So I was going to try to get something close enough that I could run up to Hobby Lobby or AC Moore or something like that. I actually wound up going to Hobby Lobby because I luckily had what I needed and go with that. So what I just, what I did, now I made a mistake in that, you'll see, well, I'll, I'll go show you what I did that's wrong. But So here's the, you know, the view looking from the side because I had to figure out now how high to make or how tall to make these pieces as well as how long to make them. So I had my one inch foam, I have my one millimeter craft foam that's going to be the road. And I, I'm glad I remembered it, I almost forgot it because it, while it's not a huge amount, it, it, it is a dimension. So all the dimensions are based off of that. And then the dimension from the top of the road, the foam, flush with the top of the three quarter ply, the sub road bed, was two and a half inches. Actually, pretty darn close to two and a half inches. All right, so that that gives me the size of this back piece because I want that to be flush. That being this piece, oops, sorry about that, this piece here with the steps on it. So now I knew how tall to make that piece. That's going to be two and a half inches tall. Now how long to make it, well, going over and actually measuring where I was on the, on the swing gate, and I made a mistake and then I didn't have enough room here for the sloped or the angled piece of the abutment, but anyway, measuring from where it's going to actually sit on the swing gate all the way out to here. This is the edge of the, the um, this is the edge of the sub road bed was nine inches, and I decided to bring it out one inch more. So that's a ten inch piece. So basically, it's a ten inch by two and a half inch piece. Now for this piece, this piece with the steps in it, I decided to make it out of balsa wood. 3 16 balsa wood that gave me not quite two feet it looks close um, they had it a quarter inch looked a little bit too big so actually for all these pieces I use 3 16 inch thick with a quarter inch cap on this one. anyways so this piece is out of balsa wood oops <laughs> because I figured I'm gonna cut these out it might just be a little bit easier to cut them out of balsa wood not that you couldn't out of basswood but I figured, you know what, I'll try balsa wood, see what happens. If it falls apart, I have another piece I could have used, but I, it, it worked okay out of balsa wood. These two pieces then, <clears throat> this piece, without the slope and without the cap, basically just sits in there to take up some space and get support. That is just a 10 inch by, now that's a different height. It's not the same height because, you know, this piece goes all the way up flush. Now these next two pieces... The height of them depends on the height of your bridge, how high that's going to wind up being. I'm holding this real crooked, aren't I? Sorry about that. Hard to do with one hand. So the height of your bridge down from the top of here, plus whatever you want to use for either a bridge foot um, or you know some adjustment for leveling, which I did want to do. So, like I said, I, I know what I'm doing in terms of this is going to be a piece of half inch plywood which is actually 19 30 seconds if you, if you really really measure it all right so that's that and then i knew i was going to put a 1 8 inch channel underneath it so that plus the 1 8 channel let me go to this sheet here hopefully this makes some sense at all but um i'm sorry that <laughs> Now, uh, let me retract myself. That plywood is actually 15, 30 seconds. <clears throat> Just under a half, right? Then with the eighth underneath it for for these pieces here that are going to run all the way across here, go, you know, that way. They're an eighth. I assume they're an eighth. That's what Evergreen calls them, so hopefully they're actually an eighth. 
All right, so that whole distance then becomes 0.59375, <laughs> whatever. I think it's like 29, 30 seconds or something crazy like that. And I, go, I, I can't measure that well. So I said, okay, that gives me that. <clears throat> and then I said, what I'm going to do, so there's my 59375, the whole width, the, the plywood piece plus the, ch the, um, the channels, okay? Now, I designed it to have about 094 of, I'll call it wiggle room, Kentucky windage, whatever you want to call it. So that is going to be in there. It's going to be a bridge shoe. Um, if it turns out to be exactly 094, that's great. If I wind up having to shim it or, you know, otherwise do things to level it, this is how I'll level the bridge perfectly. So I made the abutments then. Basically, all, it's going to be basically an inch and 13 sixteenths. So that gives me the height of these two pieces. Kind of the, the block piece and then the piece with the cap on it. Okay, cool. And then that gives me a little bit of windage here to adjust when I get this built and set it in there. You know, the, there would be a bridge shoe. And if you look at the prototype, you can kind of tell. It's hard to see, but it looks like it is up a little bit. Okay, cool. So that, that, that'll be my adjustability right here. Whether it's 090, it turns out to be 100, or you know 085, whatever. I got some styrene pieces, you know, 005 to 10 and 20 and all that kind of stuff, so I can kind of level things out. So that then set the height of these pieces. So then I had to figure out the length of them all. Well, that was a interesting endeavor because I don't claim to be the smartest dude around. What I did was. And this is for the cap piece. So this piece I now knew, this piece I now knew. Now I had to figure out how I was going to make this piece, the actual dimensions of it. So I knew, and again, I'll show you why it's not, there's no abutment on this side. So what I had to do was I knew how tall I wanted it. Now this one's got a cap on it, so you got to be careful. Now the overall, to be flush, it's the 1.8125, but I'm taking a quarter inch off of that because I'm putting a quarter inch cap. So that makes the actual block I'm going to cut 1.5625. So when I put this cap on, if I'm anywhere close, I should be level across the two pieces. All right, so then I came out here. Hold on, I'm trying to hold the camera and be able to point and talk and chew gum and walk. And, all right, so basically I'm going to cut a block. It's going to be like this, and then I'm going to cut this angle in it. So I physically took the photograph that I had, and it's probably not the way to do this, but I'm just, again, I'm just telling you what I did. I'm not telling you how to do it. <laughs> and I took this here protractor, and I laid that protractor on there to get this angle. I thought it was 45, but it's not. It actually looks to be about 32.5. Is that a normal angle for an abutment? I have no idea. But with this protractor, best I can from this photograph, which is not perfect, but okay, it's about 32.5 degrees, 32 degrees. All right, that sounds kosher. So that's what I then planned, 32.5 degrees, and I knew that I wanted, you know, I wanted it to stick out and have that angle. So then I just did some geometry, and I admit I forget. You know, I wanted to know, all right, if I do this, and I come down here at a 32.5 degree angle from here, you know, how far, how big are things going to be? Well, basically, <laughs> I knew this distance here. That's just this minus the height I wanted to make it out here. And that's roughly... Two feet, if I, if I make it 0 0.3125, then that's just the measurement that it is out here. That could be anything I wanted, but that's what I used. So that, this, minus my 3125 gives me an inch and a quarter here. I know this angle here, and I'm going to admit, totally admit, I forget my geometry. I went to Google to a right triangle calculator, <laughs> put in this side, this angle, I was able to get the dimensions for this here, so now I knew how far out this was going to come. It's actually 1.962. I think I actually made it 1.9375 because that's a weird number. So, again, all that's going to do is just change the angle a little bit. But, like I said, what I did, 
after using my wonderful Google to get me this calculation, I knew how long this was going to be, which means then I knew the actual overall size of this block. So I cut a rectangular block out of 3 16 basswood. I had to do some cutting and ripping on my table saw and stuff, which was kind of hokey, but I got it done. It, it, I didn't cut my fingers off. See, they're all here. Even that one. That's a thumb. That's not a finger, right? Whatever. So I cut this, and then I came out 10 inches, which is this dimension, to line up with the other pieces. Marked it here. I came up 3125 at the end of the board. Marked it here. Drew this line. And then I couldn't cut that with my miter saw because I couldn't swing that angle. So I put it in a small miter saw with my razor, with the razor saw, and cut it by hand, which was a pain in the butt. But anyway, I was able to cut from here and get an approximate. I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect, but and I had the two pieces taped together. So I cut through and got that angle there. So that gave me this piece here, here, here now. This little piece, I just cut it out of balsa. I had, to, I'll explain, I had to fit it, I'll show you when I show the pieces, uh, because of the caps. Because I, I didn't take into account some of the angles and how the thickness of the quarter inch pieces were going to modify things. But then I cut this cap piece out of quarter inch, you know, quarter by quarter uh, basswood. I laid this piece, a piece in here by hand, marked that and cut that angle and cut that. Eh, and it's not perfect, it was close. I had to modify the way things sit, and you'll see that a little bit when I show you the pieces. And then once I had this and this, well, actually, I didn't cut that until I the final cut, until I laid this piece in, because it's not exactly the way it's shown here. That's not the way it works in the real world. I actually laid this piece in and determined how thick or how high my balsa piece had to be, and then cut it, which is easy because it's balsa wood, so that wasn't really hard. So then I had this rectangle, this piece, and then one, two, three cap pieces. And then it was time to glue them all together, which I did, and I'll show you. Um, on the, on this, sorry for the quick zoom, the quick piece, this piece, best I could, given the dimensions that I had to keep it somewhat even, I determined that, okay, I'm an inch back, and I'm going to be... Basically six eight seven five here to be everything to be flush. Then do some simple division. It's a quarter inch here, eleven sixty fourths here, and then I this is balsa wood, so that was pretty easy to cut. I just kind of cut these verticals down across the grain, and then with the grain, use an exacto blade, cut it out, and was able to get the steps, and it seemed to work okay. So then, so they're all done. So like I said, this is going to be the bridge itself. It's going to be, this is the plywood piece, 6.625, 6 and 5 eighths long. Again, it's 15, 30 seconds plus the 1 eighth. And then looking this way at it, which is this looking through it, you can see I'm going to have the plywood piece, the I-beams running across the bottom of the bridge. I'm going to have this styrene piece out here. Probably, I don't know, 040 something like that you know and then uh, it's going to be to be on this whole outside of the of the wood piece covering the end of the beams here's the angles an 060 angle here and 060 angle here up top i'm going to put a 1 8 by 188 over the angle back onto the bridge with a half round i wanted to put a triangle that'll make them so i'll put a half round and this is going to kind of hold you know because the ballast will come in here because this cork will be right on the plywood. So then ballast. So I, there's, I don't know what's there. There's something there, I assume. I hope it looks okay. So that's going to be there on both sides. It'll be flush with the outside of the angle. Come in, have a, a quarter round there, then be ballasted across. Handrails, again, will mount into this on the 188 dimension, somewhere in there, however I decide to do it. And then put the rivets, you know, the rivets go this way, and then up top, there's another angle out here with rivets, an angle out here with rivets, and I think two more flat pieces with rivets. So, trying to get rivets across an 060 angle. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'll try it. And it's probably hard to see, if 
but they definitely are there. They're definitely across the bottom. There's an angle here. They're across the top. This is an angle that comes up underneath this little overhang piece. Because when I was walking up there, I did take a picture of that. Another angle here. Like I said, two strips here with, ang with uh, rivets on them. So that is the dimensions. And then what I'm going to try to do, and this just kind of shows in more detail. That's the, the 188 by an eighth with the 060 angle. So it sticks a little bit onto the bridge. So I can put the, the handrail on there. And then the, the half round piece will sit out here just to get something. Because it could just be like that, but I figured hey, I'll, I'll fancy that with a half round piece. Only point one. They only make the point they only make it 100, but okay, that's against a 125, so that's you know not much of a difference. So it'll sit a little bit lower than that, but I think it'll look okay. So that's the plan to make the bridge itself. So now let me take a quick pause. And I'll pull up the, uh, I'll show you the actual pieces that I made and where we stand right now. Okay, here we are. Here are the pieces cut. So here's the one with the steps. This is the 316th balsa. And you can see I cut the steps out of it. So that's, that's that piece. This is a piece of basswood just cut. Again, as a dimension, wherever they are, I told you they're going to be. That's the next piece. And then this is the actual, I'll call it the cap piece. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a large piece, a large rectangle that I cut. Again, that angle in. There's a little uh, balsa wood piece. And here are the three pieces that make the angles up. And you can see it's not perfect. I don't know if it's going to show, but you can see it's, it's not. <laughs> I had to do some monkeying around to get things to work. You can see it's off down here. In this little corner again you know, I don't claim to be a smart civil engineer or anything like that or you, you can just see it you'll see it you can tell it's off the tip of that angle comes down a little bit what I'm probably gonna do I'm thinking of actually adding a piece of um, monster model works concrete form where do I have here it is okay this is because it kind of looks cool and concretey now I put that in there, and also what it does with the 3 16th inch thick, you know, main abutment, the quarter inch, this overhangs a little bit too big. It's a little bit more than 3 inches. But if I take an 015 sheet of this concrete form and put it in there and glue it down, then that comes almost, to almost a perfect 3 inch overhang. Not a big deal. I mean, visually, I don't think you'd ever really notice that, but this also gives a nice texture to it as well for the abutment. So I'm, I'm thinking of doing that. And what that'll also help me do, I'll make, you know, one piece out here, cut the angles in it because it's so thin. That'll help secure, because right now this balsa piece is just glued to this. So it's, <laughs> so far it's not falling apart. But if I put a piece of this out here across it, it'll help secure things and, you know, to come back to here for one piece and then finish it up with another, sorry, with an, another piece. Two pieces will do that. So that's what it looks like. I know my lighting's not the best. And it needs to be filed a little bit. And I may come back in and fill things in with some, either some putty or, you know, some wood filler or something. But uh, that is pretty much how it's all going to sit. So there's, that's the... The one side above me, this is the other side. Actually, things are pretty darn level. I surprised myself. I got things pretty level in here. So what I'm going to do now that I have these two done, well, just for fun, we'll take them over. We'll put them on the actual uh, swing gate so you can see what I mean by the mistake I made here. So let me just show you that real quick just to be, you know, fully transparent with my viewers. All right, the light on this side isn't the greatest, but I can show you kind of what I mean here, how I kind of goofed up. If I thought more in advance, I probably could have done something different, but so here the abutments are in. Here's the bridge piece. You can see it's sitting low because it doesn't have the one-eighth or the adjustment or, the, you know, the bridge shoes on it yet. So hopefully when it's all done, that'll be nice and flush. Now here's where I goofed, sort of. You see what I had to do? In order for me to do this, you know, this has to end because this is going to be sloped down, right? So this is all going to have foam in it. 
and I'll cut it in here and here and it's gonna be nice and pretty and yay all right so on this side that's fine again that's why I brought it out to here that's when my steps start and then this will all be sloped down and things should look pretty good on, on this side now on this side I had this run all the way back and it's got a freaking you know, support piece here and here well just imagine if I tried to bring this down well that can't be there be, you know what I mean it's got to start to slope so what I should have done is cut this a lot shorter to slope it so does it make sense <laughs> to me it does because you know I, I can't have an angled abutment with earth right behind it I guess you could but it could look kind of weird so what I did okay fine so I'm gonna do just to keep this thing moving I'll just bring this all the way back and I'll cut it out here and just say for whatever reason the actual angle piece starts here off the layout <laughs> whatever <laughs> I know looks a little bit strange but that's what I had to do to make it work so that's where I am right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these three pieces together on this side on this side sand them up a little bit probably we'll probably add in the uh, I want to add that piece on the front of the cap piece do that first and then what I can do while I'm waiting because I just had to order some stuff to make this I don't have the I beam so I had to order them so that could be a week I don't know how long but I can get all this installed I can get all this installed get the road working sidewalk in you know this will all be nice and painted and everything I can work on the scenery work on the scenery here the slopes and everything have all this actually could be done finish this and then get it in leveled and then get the track across it because I really can't do a whole lot till the tracks done but at least I can keep working on the other stuff so so that's that so that's really pretty much I guess the next I'll show you when all things all done or maybe I'll show when this is all installed and painted to see how that looks but that's what I did for this bridge so again not really a how-to more kind of how I thought through it um, how I goofed up here how I decided to you know cut this I forgot my geometry but thanks to Google I was able to calculate things uh, using pieces that were available at a local store Hobby Lobby without having to order them I could have got a little closer to scale if I went with northeastern scale lumber but I really didn't feel like waiting because again I want to get this done so I can get the scenery done and get everything ready uh, to, to, to be ready for the track as soon as my pieces come in to finish the actual bridge itself so I think it's gonna look okay again I'm not I don't claim to be a bridge expert oops my buttons are falling but everything seems to line up pretty good everything's nice and flush so far I mean this will be flush once I get it done so I think it should look pretty nice or at least close I think it's gonna look close to the prototype not exact but close so all right stop babbling Rob let me get to work let me get some of these done and maybe show a little bit more when these are done and painted and installed uh, then we're just waiting for this I will show this as well so I, I guess I won't really finish this video till I actually have the whole thing done and can show the whole bridge but uh, all right more to come as we keep working on this Alrighty, here are the, I'm calling them the finished abutments. They're not painted yet, but they're pretty much done. Um, I did glue on that Monster Model Works form. I think it looks pretty good. Um, it kind of gives you the look of that, that concrete look. I think when it's painted, it looked pretty nice. Then it also kind of covered up, you know, this little piece of balsa that was added here on the end. It kind of looks more continuous. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I did use some of this. This is from MIG. It's a concrete acrylic paste. I've had it for a while. I always wanted, wanted to try it. So I did use it to fill in. There was a little bit of a gap right up in here on both pieces. And then kind of around some where the cap piece was joined in. Um, along the edges along the top a little bit it's probably hard to see uh, you know, I don't even know how well that pattern of the monster model work sheet is showing up on the video it looks like it's focusing okay 
So overall, I think we're ready to go. I did add, look at the prototype photo. There is a joint line that comes down here. I just added with, I just scrapped with a knife. I want to be careful. I don't want to start running the knife in there and all of a sudden, boom, I cut the damn thing off. So here and on this one as well, I added it. Because uh, on the prototype photo, you can see it's there coming right down here. So I did. And I didn't distress it more. I mean, this is a photo from, you know, 2019. And these are going to be the late 50s. That's quite a few years ago. Would they be in better shape? I would think. Um, I'm not exactly sure when all that was done, but it's probably quite a few years ago. So, all right, so that is it. I did, uh, I distressed the edge of these blocks here. Blocks with the other steps coming down with uh, with a wire brush just kind of mucky them up a little bit because they do look pretty beat up on the prototype photo I don't know how well that'll show up but if you look you can see they're they're pretty beat up there up there on the side so I decided to go ahead and use the wire brush to muck them up a little bit so now these are all glued together all three three pieces they seem nice and level. Oops. I did come in and sand the bottom. I sanded across here a little bit. So, again, these, boom, and boom. Again, I don't have the best light here. Probably looks better over on the actual layout, but that's what we're going to do. So, what I'm going to do now is get them painted. Uh, I have some work to do over on the actual swing bridge part of it. I need to get the road in and painted sidewalk in or sidewalk ready um you know get the road all done and some of the foam work done have these painted up get these glued in then, then i can do all the other scenery work you know, in and around here with the foam and whatnot get that pretty much done and then it's a matter of just waiting again waiting for some the i-beams most of the i-beams to come in to work on the bridge itself so there we go okay let's uh, get these painted up and get ready to install them on the layout Okay, here they are. Got them both done. I um, what I did, like, like I said, I put the the washes on first, and then the a few different colors, kind of broad brush of the pigments to kind of blend things together. I then went ahead and I did dab on a coat of matte varnish to kind of help seal everything. You probably could spray it with dull coat too, although I find sometimes that really really subdues the powders. Uh, this did a little bit, um, but then I went back and I dry brushed it, which may be really hard to see because it's really kind of subtle. Um, but I did, you know, more kind of along the edge of the cap piece and in certain locations, especially around the blocks up here because they kind of got damaged. And again, I don't think my camera and lighting is good enough to show it, but uh, used a little bit of the chalk white and dry brushed it just a little bit. It does show up a little bit. I added some more green here along the bottom. I just like the way that looks. <laughs> this, this being the left side. Oops, sorry. Oh, I'm knocking things over. And this being the right side. So again, I think they turned out pretty darn nice. Not that I like to pat myself on the back, but I like them. And I, I also do like the way it looks with the Monster Model Works concrete form. I think that really, really kind of makes it pop a little bit. Um, it, it gave me a real nice looking you know, overlap with the cap piece, which is just about the right size, a scale three inches. It's got a little bit of texture to it. Um, now you probably could have done it just with the bare wood and roughed it up and, and whatnot and done it, and that would be fine. But again, I wanted to try this. This is something that I haven't, hadn't used before. I had it. So if you were lucky enough to get some of this before Monster Model Works went out of business. Maybe worthwhile I'm trying it for something like this, or other abutments, or something like that. So these are pretty much now ready to be installed. The left and the right. Now it's a matter of getting these, getting the road ready, and getting these installed. And since I'm still waiting for some pieces to come in for the bridge itself, and get that built, and hopefully get everything done. Sorry, more to come. 
as we continue working on this little overpass project. Well, here's the underside of the bridge. I got my eye beams in. I don't know why I'm doing this because you really can't see it, but there they are. They're all glued across the bottom of the bridge. Yeah, that was fun. Cutting them wasn't bad. I used the uh, Northwest Short Line chopper. That was actually pretty easy. Gluing them on, that was a little more tedious, but. So now it's gonna sit like that. And that looks cool. Look at oh, look at the eye beams. Yeah, but these are the channel pieces that I made up for the side of the bridge, best I can figure from the prototype. It's basically a piece of styrene with angles, uh, top and bottom 060, and then another piece there at the end, at the ends. And I admit defeat on this. I did try to lay in there a, uh, a string of the archer rivets I couldn't do it you had to trim it so thin to actually fit into an 060 channel that when I tried to you know wet the back of it and then it just it I couldn't do it so so I took a pounce wheel rolled it in there it's probably really hard to see because the light here isn't great but that's gonna sit like that and of course cover up everything <laughs> So why did I do it? I don't know. So that's that. So we're going to keep uh, plugging away here. Yeah, the other pieces came in as well. And then get it assembled. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do for the railing. Although I did get some brass rod. 032 brass rod. Maybe make something out of scratch. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. All right. More to come as we uh, progress here. All right, here's the bridge, as I've got it so far. I have the side girders. Oops. They're on. There's the bottom with all the individual eye beams and I painted that. That was just a spray bomb, some uh, whatever kind of primer it was. That's kind of what it looks like in the prototype. I'm not sure yet what color I'm going to paint the the side. It's got a, a gray primer on it now, the Tamiya surface primer and then I added these pieces across to kind of be the kind of the barrier for the for the ballast this will be a ballast of deck bridge so once it's in place and leveled and everything you know this is gonna have the cork and then ballast so I figured that's something that it kind of looks like I have no idea if that's a real how the prototype would do it so now <laughs> We come to the railing and what in the world am I going to do for that? So here's what I'm going to try. I don't know if I'll be able to pull this off. This is the 032 brass that I got. Looks looks good. I have a titchy railing. Looks a little bit too small. So plus it doesn't have the shape here at the end. So here's what I'm going to try. I had to figure out what radius to bend this to. It looks to be about two feet so I found this this bit that, that once I rolled it around there it's about two feet nothing scientific it's close enough I looked at some other drill bits and screwdrivers and pin vise and this is the one that kind of came the closest to kind of visually it looks good so what I'm thinking is it might be hard to see but I did mark looks like the stanchions are about six feet ish I don't know but here's what I'm gonna do so I made up another thing I did <laughs> such a dork when I opened the package uh, well, I was trying to open it and I bent it so I bent the damn wa the uh, damn wire <laughs> like, you idiot so anyway so I cut off after the bend and one piece wasn't long enough to give me the whole thing anyway I was hoping it might be that if I you know could bend the two ends that one piece would be able to work so I have less connections to make but it's it's not quite right so I have to have two pieces, and that's what I have. So I have one here, and then one here. And like I said, what, what I think I'm going to do, gosh, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm going to try to solder these. But I'm going to set up another 
fixture and then put some double-sided tape down real thin double-sided tape because I have to be able to hold this somehow because if I do this I'm gonna have individual little wire pieces in you know one in between the two and then one down below it yeah there's no way that's gonna stay just floating around so I'm gonna have to do something to secure it and then try to come in and, and you know solder everything so again I don't know if I can pull it off I guess I could try to super glue it but I'd rather solder it just for strength so I'm gonna try to make another fixture up basically a jig you know I, I, so I do have it marked where the stanchions are I'll transfer that I'll line this up you know the, the, the two halves I'll line up cut them and I was thinking do I want to cut it at another stanchion or cut it in the cent in the center if I cut it in the center it's just two little solder joints if I do the stanchion then I got you know each half the the, the, the st uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know but anyway so that's the concept but that's roughly how big it'll be I get real rough um, I don't know how well it's just showing up I'm gonna bring it out so it's about the edge of this this kind of overhangs the the abutment over on the on the layout so that's what I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try to solder it which means I need to cut you know all these little individual pieces in between and then the leg piece down below it that's a lot of pieces a lot of little tiny pieces again I don't know if I'm good enough to pull it off but hey you know what nothing ventured nothing gained so I'll give it a shot so uh, let's see what happens here <laughs> this might be the last video I ever do ah! okay there's the first railing now what I had to do uh, the idea with that tape worked pretty good because I guess I had the two pieces in put them together in the center these bottom pieces 16 of them I just measured and cut them they, that was pretty simple to cut and then used a wheat stone to to kind of you know round over the edges and whatnot each of these individual ones in between though I had to cut because I'm not perfect here on the the distance so they're not all the same so I wound up having to cut each one of those um, you know hitting it up with a wheat stone and then getting it installed so then I came back and started to solder it that was okay I used the uh, same, same stuff I use when I do the the fast tracks I uh, figure that stuff works pretty good and I'm going ahead I'm soldering and, and it's fine it's not flowing real nice got to the end I said wait a minute you idiot why don't you, why don't you try some using some of the flux well that really helped so again I don't know if you can see I'll try to zoom in I don't know if it's gonna work it's gonna focus um, it actually you know when you get the flux in there it kind of makes it look like a little joint you know what I mean it looks I think it looks actually fairly fairly good now the trick is gonna be to carefully extract this because it's got the tape behind it and I don't want to, you know, yank it out of there and bend it up and ruin the darn thing. I wish I could just leave it like that. <laughs> um, then get it out and clean it up and hopefully it's all together and nice and sturdy. So I'm going to try to very carefully extract this and see what we get. But uh, so far, so good. I mean, setting this up took about an hour to do all the cutting and fitting and setting it up. But having the tape there really did help. It held everything nice. Still a little bit of movement on some of the pieces when I was got the soldering iron in there, but overall, I think it looks okay. Uh, and we'll see when we get it out, but I think once you get it out, if I do a little bit of cleanup here, and hopefully the back side, it's all nice and soldered in, and then get it painted, I think it's going to look okay. So, all right, let's see if I can safely get this out of here without ruining it, because if I do, I'll be out in the backyard screaming. So let's see what happens here. Alrighty, I got it out safely. Just took my time and used an exacto, uh, you know, blade kind of right behind it. Came out of the tape pretty nicely, nice and gently. And I slid a scale underneath it and carefully got it up. Doesn't seem to be any damage to it. Um, since it's not perfect, and then you know, the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use the flux on all of them, and some of the joints don't look that good. So I'm going to use this on the workshop side which is quite a bit darker so you can't really see it as well but overall let's see if I can zoom in here I think 
that's looking okay. Again, the the blobs of solder are more on the front side, which is the side most people are going to see. But I think eh, I'm off a little bit. See, that's that moved a little bit on the end there. Eh, eh, oh well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So now I just got to do it again. Do it one more time. So in another hour and a half or so of work to get that done. And then, it'll be seriously a lot more ready <laughs> to be installed. So, all right. Let's do one more. I'm trying to get this thing ready to go in the layout. All right. Here's the second one in the jig. Well, <laughs> not really a jig. In the fixture, ready to go. Got the Saturday iron warming up. And again, each of these in between had to be cut and filed and shaped and and fit in there just because again I'm not perfect on my the two horizontal railings all these other ones were just cut before placed in there on some I ran new tape I'm actually using tape let me just uh, zoom back here Ooh. that's how I applied it it's the same type of, I think people use it for shingles it's the 3M, I forget what it is, but I used to use this when I was doing photography and matting up photographs and everything, but it works very nicely, double-sided. So that's on there, so let's uh, get this soldered and get her done. All right, there's the second railing. Went a lot easier than the other one. It literally took me about maybe five minutes to solder it once I got started you know an hour or so to get it set up and then probably 15 minutes to clean it all anyway but there you go so I think it looks okay and some of the stanchions are a little out of cattywampus and maybe the shotter joints are a little bit too big but you know what I'm glad I did it. I was outside. I definitely went outside of my comfort zone, tried something different, and uh, I th I think I have a you know unique bridge for the railroad. So I'm happy I did it. So don't be afraid to try stuff. If you don't try new things or you know say go outside your comfort zone, you know you'll, you'll never grow as a modeler and learn new things. Could I bought a kit for this? Sure. Could I use titchy railings? Yep. But I wanted something that looks more like the, the original, so I'm glad I tried it. Perfect? Absolutely not. But does it capture the look of the actual bridge? I think so. So, all right. Now to get it all painted up, whatever I'm going to paint it, and then get it installed. Alrighty, this bridge is darn near ready to go on. On the layout. Let's do it. Uh, so what I did... Um, Let's see, what did I do from the, from the last segment? I freaking forget. I don't know. <laughs> I did paint it. Um, once I had the railings on, I give everything, and, and this piece glued on and everything, I give it a good shot of, a, I don't know, some Rust-Oleum primer color, a dark grayish color. Then I came back in. I figured, you know what, I'm, I'm going to weather it a little bit, but not terribly. You know, like this is, you know, I'm saying the layout now is, uh, you know, circa 1957, 58. Um, I don't really know how long this version of the bridge had been in but according to a friend of mine who lived in the area for ever since he was a kid um, he he thinks this version of the bridge went in in the late 40s so okay so if I say 1950 so it's been in place for about seven eight years so yeah it's gonna have some weathering but it's not gonna be like the current one is today with you know all kinds of peeling and um, you know, really kind of rough looking. So I said, okay, so I'll weather it up, but not terribly. It's got a little bit of surface rust, uh, which I did with um, one of the Vallejo washes and then dabbing it with a sponge, you know, dry, having the sponge get pretty dry and then coming, not a big piece like this, but a little piece of sponge. And, I, and then I got it, you know, nice and got this soaked in, on a paper towel. Of course, you can't see what I'm doing. Took most of all the paint off, and then just kind of came along and just kind of dabbed it on there. So that, that's kind of a, that's that's a pretty common technique 
for adding just some slight rust to it. Again, I'm not going to any peeling because I'm going to say it's not quite that old. Uh, then I did come back and put a little rust wash. Uh, I painted the railing kind of a blue-gray color. This, I assume it would be kind of a, you know, that, that, a steel a steel railing. Again, relatively new. It's got a little bit of rust on it. Maybe too much, but anyway, but I think it looks okay. Um, so that is pretty much ready to go. That's, you know, the bottom I'm not going to do much to because that's really hardly ever going to be seen. And the other side is just the other side. I did this, the exact same thing to the other side, uh, which is actually much harder to see from the from the workshop side, which is from this side, only because it's darker the way it sits. So you know what? I'm going to say it's ready to go. Uh, if I ever want to come back and monkey with it some more, I can. But again, most people... You know, they're going to come in and go, oh, look, a bridge, and then boom, and they'll be totally out of their mind. So I'm not going to spend a whole, whole lot of effort. Although I like it. I'm glad I, I went ahead and, like I said, went out of my comfort zone a little bit to make this railing nice and sturdy. I wonder if I could hang on it. <laughs> uh, I probably need to go look and see. I, I assume back in that time frame, they would have put the height, the clearance. It's a 13 foot 4. Uh, prototype, I'll, it's close enough for me. I'm not sure what kind of clearance signs they used for that. If they would have, I don't know, because the original one's kind of got it. I think it's got one right here. Uh, look at the picture. And the other side, one side has it sitting here, one side has it hanging off the railing. So, I, But I don't know how they did that or what font or what colors or anything they used back in the, in the late 50s. I mean, I worry about it too much, to be honest, but. Okay, here I go babbling again. All right, so there it is. I'm going to call it pretty much done. Slap it on a hiney and get it on the layout. Okay, one more thing I tried. And seriously, now then after this, I'm done. Um, I got some of these metallic pencils. Let's see if this is even legible. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but these are from... Uh, Oh, a vendor on Amazon, and I wanted to try them because I saw this technique in another book that I just bought. And it's on uh, actually weathering railroad stuff, but it's by AK Interactive, so it's kind of interesting. And what I what they did in that book to do some handrails and stuff was use these pencils. So I wanted to, I wanted to try it. Just I can't resist trying new things. So I did it. I took uh, kind of a a metallic steel type looking color and what I did with it and I don't know if it's going to show up because it really is subtle I went along the railings because I wanted to kind of impart that look of a metallic railing on top of the paint and some of the rust that I had already done so I'm going to try to zoom in I, I don't know <laughs> if this will even show up because it really is subtle but it does look and I'm looking at it compared to the original so I, I can notice it not that anyone's ever going to come in here and look at the railing that close but again that's more a technique I wanted to try so you can see how it kind of imparts a metallic look to the railings and then what I also did just for a little bit of fun I took this right along the edge of the, of the channel down here to make it look at the edge got a little bit of wear on it and along here and in here and that's just taking this and just kind of I'm it right along the edge and again it's subtle it's not uh, someone's gonna leap out at you I use this side which is kind of a darker you know, like a you know dark graphite type color and this probably won't really won't show up but I did it on the edge see on the edge of that piece there eh, you probably can't it probably won't even focus but all right anyway so I tried it. I do like it on the railing. And I do kind of like it in the way, you know, yeah. Zoom in, use your finger to point, way to go. And I did use, again, th this color, kind of along the, the steel angle. And along this angle here a little bit. Just kind of gives a look. Again, it, it's subtle. It's not something that's going to leap out at you. But I like it, so... Thought I'd try it and all right now really I'm gonna shut up and I'm done. I'm gonna install this thing in a layout. <laughs> really I am. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. Here it is. Finally, as it's gonna be on the layout, placed it in there. And if you saw the swing gate video, if you survived that hour-long video, here's another hour-long one for you. <laughs> the only thing I did is add that clearance sign. Um, it's actually closer to 13 feet, but I don't have one. And uh, this came out of a set. I kind of like the way it looks. Not real weathered. I figured it's kind of new because truck drivers and their newer height trucks kept driving into it. So they made it nice and big, and it's a relatively new addition to the bridge. So that is it. That's it on the layout. Kind of like the way it looks. I think the again the railing captures the look of the prototype. The abutments are close. Uh, now of course next it's got to be ballasted and get the scenery done in here. But in terms of the bridge itself, I'm gonna call that done. So you know, if, you, if you survive this hour long video, this got a lot longer than I thought it was too. But uh, I don't know why I say that, because all my videos get too long. But again, I did cover a lot about the abutments and some of the prototype and just a thought process that I went through. So there you go. Scratch built Route 98 overpass in Fairview, Pennsylvania. So hopefully it was instructive, helpful. At least gives you an option for a bridge if you need to make something on your layout. I am proud of myself. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit it on the railings on this one. Um, I'm surprised I pulled that off, but I'm glad I tried it, and I'm happy with the way they turned out. So, good things come if you try new stuff. So, okay, thanks for watching, and uh, on to more work on the layout.